house I grew up in that's in the neighborhood I live in now, it's for sale and I wanna call the realtor so I can go in and see if the little things are still etched in there that I put and, and stuff like that. I don't wanna buy it because really I have a house already, you know, that would be extreme. But I'm coming to you to tell you this. I was going to um show you the little coleslaw I just made but I already ate it but I want to tell you this that um I've not felt good today and, and I'll tell you why because the situation that I went through for years and I'll try to be brief on this you can watch my video called healing autoimmune disorders and also a video I did with cooked and raw vegans at YouTube channel and you can type that in and Tanny raw if you're interested in my background story of how I became a low-fat raw vegan but anyway, you know, I've lived on, on this diet for over nine years now, you know, and really over 14 on vegan. But sometimes the things that I had in the past that have clearly dissipated, and I almost want to say really they've gone away, but occasionally they can rear their ugly head as a simple, strong reminder of why the heck I do what I do. You know, um, what happens is my body has an overactive immune response. Like it thinks something's trying to get it. So it it's an overactive as if um, I had a lot of other symptoms too. I had lupus and IBS and Crohn's, leaky gut, a long list of things, okay? You name it, if it's under the autoimmune disorder category, I have been labeled with it. But here's the thing. As that started to go away, the main thing I would have left was this sort of overreaction on my skin. Not something you can really see, except you could see the swelling, like a small, like if a bee stung you and that area is swollen. Um, and it would be like that all over, except it feels like um, needles stabbing in me all over. It feels like I can't even get dressed. I mean, now it is four o'clock in the afternoon and this came on me last night from some stress that I let affect me, which is my own fault because I let that change my inner terrain of calm, you know? And you can only do the best you can do every day. And I'm very aware of this stress situation that comes on me because now I can control my food and I can control, you know, there's certain things that will cause that, like if I eat non-organic, conventional celery for example the pesticides bother me different things like that if I'm in a smoke-filled room that will set it off or um, different things like that but but nowadays it's gotten to where stress will do that and the only thing that really helps it um, because clearly I'm not gonna go on immune suppressing drugs you can look that up and the side effects of what that does to people and what that does to your organs all kinds of things you can look it up and see there's no way in heck am I taking those things okay so and this is what I had avoided all those years of not taking those things I would never go that route but when this uh, this response comes up the thing that I have found works best to get that down it's it's almost like a very strong inflammation reaction is basically taking cranberries and I used to juice them but now I can blend them in with lemons um, dandelion parsley a little bit of turmeric and ginger as you see that's a lot of like flushing items and a lot of um, inflammation dissipating items do you see what I mean so that's what I do and I have been drinking that all day long from the time I got up and I worked with some people this morning and um, I was in pain and I've told them what was going on and they they understand and all but um here's here was my point if you wake up and you don't feel good okay or you're trying to overcome a dis-ease which is just your body not at ease my body has not been at ease today but tomorrow it will right I'm not going to lay and crawl back in the bed and feel sorry for myself I'm going to be thankful for the things that are going right today I'm gonna to be thankful that I could help Roshan this morning on her plan and that I could you know 
make plans with other people and all these things. I'm going to be thankful for that, you know. I'm not just going to lay there because I have noticed if I do that, if I just lay around and don't do anything, the pain stays on me longer. And I think a lot of it has to do with your mental mindset. Which brings me to the whole thing. Number one, not feeling sorry for you while you're in the healing mode, okay? Looking at what's good and believing that it's going to happen is very important. I think these things go hand in hand. I don't think you can you can heal without a holistic approach like with mind, soul, body, and spirit. You know, I just really don't believe that. I think somebody can have a really bad attitude and, and eat the most pristine, fresh, picked off the tree, organic, homegrown greens they can eat, but their attitude disease their body, put their body at not ease, dis-ease. So anyway, I just wanted to encourage you to every day look for, look for what's good, you know? Um, look for... And I hate to say silver lining, but we always just see the negative and, and woe is me and everything is so, you know, bad and, and oh, it's just so bad for me. It's never as bad on me as it is for someone else today. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to encourage you with that and I wanted to remind you that even if you're if you're healing and dis-ease or you are overcoming your weight or maybe you slip off or maybe something isn't seamless is my point. Let's just say it's not. There's a reason for that. There, there's a reason that you can learn from that, you know? I mean, every battle, you're either the winner because you're the winner or you're the winner because you learn from that. You know what I mean? You're the winner. Tanya wins. <laughs> That's what Christopher says. Chris wins. <laughs> anyway, so also let me encourage you, stressors in your life that you can minimize. Th there's a lot of things that can be just arrow shooting at me. Um, I've noticed from things that I could basically just turn off. I could just turn those off. It, it wouldn't really affect anyone and it would just go away. And I have done that with many things and I'm going to continue to do that. You know, there could be things in your environment. Y'all know that for years I dealt with OCD and I like to have a streamlined environment. And if I allow myself not to get out of my, or to collect too many things, or there's, I don't feel peaceful. I know other people that might not be your case, but I'm very aware of myself and I don't feel calm. I love simplicity. I love, like there to be nothing on the counter but just a little maybe dome cage with a, a candle under it and just seeing the light beams you know the way it shines on the nothing it's it's a very simplicity makes me feel calm you know and I try to surround myself with calm and I surround myself with calm essential oil smells and sounds and things like that you know I don't like background noise really. I don't like um, if I'm in someone else's environment and there's a TV blaring and it's this hostility. It really bothers me. And some people are thinking, well, you freak like you can't live house. Yes, I can deal with anything, but I just notice that it just isn't calming and it's not right for me. You know, so at the end of the day, number one, realizing that your battle today, you're the winner, as long as you see it that way, okay? Number two, looking for the good. Focusing on the good so that you can have a holistic approach to health and you can heal, you know? And and being aware of yourself and being aware that if, if you feel like that television's bothering you or that you're not gonna shut off someone else's thing, but I'm just saying, be aware and when you can, Make that work in your perimeter, you know? Make, make it to where there's a calming place for you or where, you know, or, or frankly, some people in your life and, and some people you can separate yourself from. Not all, but some. You may need to tell this person what you're doing to me and how you are coming into my orbit isn't working for me. 
And I don't really give a dang how freaky somebody thinks I am. Because you look around, if you don't take up for yourself, no one will. You don't take up for yourself and love yourself, no one will. You lay your head down under their feet enough times and you'll eventually get stomped. So grow stronger in yourself. Grow stronger in knowing what's working for you, you know? To how to love you and how to embrace pain or, or a hardship or somebody left you or you lost your job or whatever. It, it's a silly statement, but you know, when, when one door shuts, another one opens or, or the window cracks or whatever, or it might be dark, but there's a beam of light under the door. You can't escape the light if you look for it, right? There's a glimmer somewhere. It could be the darkest sky, and, and if you look long enough, you will finally see a glimmer up there somewhere. Even as, if it's a reflection, it's still what you seek, you'll find, you know? So, um, I'm just going out to get, get a few little items. I had that, um, I need some more lemons and cranberry, and I'm going to continue to flood myself with that flushing tonic. The tonic of love for me because that's what it does it, it cleans out my system and it, it works for me you know and that might not work for everybody but embracing that you know I was telling my mom on the phone she was like um well well let's let's get out of the house or let's go to the movies see going to the movies is not really my thing I it has to be something I really want to watch for me to sit there and, and let media take over my mind. I don't enjoy dumping off my own thoughts to let other things infiltrate my brain when it might not be the wavelength I want to ride on right then. I, that sounds strange to people, but it's semi-disturbing to me. But anyway, I was telling her that I didn't feel well, and she said, you know what, why is that fair? Why is, why? Her main thing is why, all those years is, why were you sick? You were never sick as a kid. Why did all your hair have to fall out? Why does your hair have those, what she'll say is freakish frizz, okay? Why? I'm like, I don't know. It doesn't matter why. What matters is loving me for who I am. What matters is me loving the fact that my hair did come back in. For, for embracing and not trying to straighten my hair when it's curly now. Not trying to fit into everybody else when, when I don't fit into that. I don't I don't need to fit in, you know? Um, what else I want to tell you about that? Oh, yes. So, I was just telling her, um, she was like, why? I'm like, Mom, the answer when you ask me why is this. Here's the answer. I don't know. I don't know. And I'm not talking about just saying, well, I don't know. We'll just, you know, screw it and not even try to get a plan. I'm just talking about some things you don't know why. Maybe it has made me develop an empathy and sympathy for other people. Maybe it has grown me past the very shallow teenager I used to be. Maybe it grew me into a better mom or an understanding mom to my little girl now, you know? Or why does it matter? So anyway, um, taking those things that seem like the negative in your life and seeing them differently. Just like you seeing your failure on your diet and lifestyle or your trip ups or your, your backslide or whatever you want to say or you fell off your plan or you sucked or you whatever, seeing that differently. Starting to see it as stepping stones because instead of you seeing it as failure, you're seeing it as a building block. Is it a stumbling block or a building block today, you know? So anyway, I just wanted to come to y'all in the midst of pain, showing love every dang day. <laughs> talk about it, about it, and dish about it, about it. Let's talk about it, about it. Can we talk about it? But you ain't gotta say too much, ain't gotta say too much. I can read your body.